Howdy. Hello. Uh, Count Gooby, first time chat. Welcome, hey. welcome to the channel. About nothing, but that's okay. <laughs> Alright. It's chilly. Drooling the place up. Welcome, everybody. Alright, so. Um, welcome to stream number number seven. Yeah. That's crazy. I think this is number four on Capriccio. I that would make sense, yeah. 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 So today we are working on Capriccio Arabe by uh, Francisco Targa. And um, for those who were not here last time, or for those who might not remember, we'll do a quick little recap of sort of the major points from that lesson. Yeah. So the first one, I think the biggest one that, we, that was kind of this thread... Um, throughout. What's up, GSD? How you doing? GSD. Um, the biggest major thread was the idea of decision making yeah. as early as pro possible in your process. Yeah. And not being afraid to have that decision ultimately be um, changed, changed yeah. questioned, uh, mm -hmm. challenged, right? right, right. Um, all of those things are meant to be thought provoking and yeah. encourage you to dive deeper into it mm -hmm. um, to either validate, yeah. support, mm -hmm. or make a change, you know, totally. from a different yeah. perspective. Yeah. Um, and by making those decisions earlier on, uh, my perspective as um, someone who who remembers vividly making that that uh, that shift philosophically in, yeah. in practice is that it allows me to feel more confident with what I'm doing earlier on, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, by making these decisions, there's more intent, there's more commitment, there's more involvement in what you're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's not to say that your practice is necessarily any different, but it is just about... Um, you know, you have something that you are actively seeking to develop, actively seeking to do, and that's going to make you play in a different way. Yeah. It's going to it's going to encourage certain things. Barry, how's everyone doing? We are doing well. On, uh, on that topic, though, yeah. like, I went back and listened, I think it's in the second Capriccio lesson. Yep. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's in the first. Mm -hmm. um, but I went back and listened to that one, and you had a really great quote there to, like make decisions early on otherwise those decisions will be made for you mm -hmm. um and how you want to avoid that like, yeah so, so it's you know my my teacher had a great point it's like the decision will either be made with you or without you yeah and um what he kind of meant by that is if you're kind of just going by the seat of your pants mm -hmm. certain things are going to just start to happen they're mm -hmm. just going to start to become part of what goes on and is that really chilly yeah. um is that really how you want to cultivate your interpretation right right um and i think you know again for me it was always what is the right answer what is the right decision that i should yeah. be making mm -hmm. and that was in the beginning process that was never the point the point was to make the decision yeah. The decision yeah. then allows us in the lesson to have a discussion. Yeah. Right? Um, thank you. Just put it right there. That's okay. Um, <laughs> it's great. You have your new best new best friend. Totally. Yep. Um, in the first sure. video, he's up there. Too. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. It helps me make sure that I'm on the yeah. edge of the seat. There you, you go. Know, proper posture. <laughs> he's he's up and out. You must leave space for the cat behind. Yep. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah. I think that it's one of those, you know... Um, and that was a different perspective uh, because, you know, I think when we all are practicing, at least for me, when I was going through all this, it was much more of this sort of things are going to happen and whatever happens is going to happen and that's the way it is yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. And not making these very deliberate choices, whether it's a fingering choice, whether it's a dynamic choice, a phrasing choice, a tone color choice, uh -huh. um, a tempo, rubato, a gelerando, like... Making those choices was not something that I thought of as what I did. Mm -hmm. And that's because up until then, what wound up happening is really that the teachers were making those choices for me. Yeah. I can tell you how many times I had a lesson where, okay, you're going to be forte here. You're going to be piano here. You're going to crescendo yeah. here. And that's what I was used to. 
Yeah. Um, and that's, I would say, what most students are used to. Yeah. Um, and but at some point you want to develop independence and, like, yeah. with options or... Maybe. Exactly. And I, and I think the other thing is that, you know, from the lineage of my teacher, his goal was never to make students play how he plays a piece. Okay. His goal is to foster and nurture um, your the student's creative voice. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah, we're going to have discussions about validity of choices. Okay. Um, because there's going to be information that maybe we're not considering... Which is, again, part of the discussion point of view. Uh, but then there's going to be other things where it's like, oh, this is great, but have you seen this? Have you heard this in the music? How are those things now affecting this initial choice? Are yeah. they in conflict? Are they working together? If it's working together, that's uh -huh. pretty straightforward. But if they're in conflict, which one is going to take priority? You know, which one are we going to focus on? Um, you know, and all that kind of stuff. So... Again, it, it sparks for more of a conversation with, uh, within the lesson. Makes yeah. the lesson much more of a coaching. Because, in all honesty, you have the basics of what interpretation yeah. should be. Yeah, right? yeah. You know, in general, we know when we're going to get loud, when we're going to get soft. We know when it's appropriate to do those things. We know how to come up with basic phrasing. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Um and so now it's a matter of making those choices for ourselves. So um, that's sort of the big thing. <laughs> Who's the trainee? This is JC Practices. Let's give him a shout out. Yes. This is John. I stream sometimes, not nearly as often. You're on Monday and Fridays usually? Monday and Fridays. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I guess that's, that's consistent. It's yeah. something. It's not what I I'm, It's not nothing. I am, I am not what people recommend to do with streaming. Where it's like every day you stream, oh, really? but oh yeah, well that's uh, all, that's a whole other thing, yeah, um, which we don't need to get into. But yeah, I, <laughs> but yeah, it's like anyway. So yeah, this is JC Practice. He's a, another um, streamer here on Twitch. Streams his practice sessions. Another classical guitarist, hobbyist, still <laughs> learner, yeah, all that. Cool. Um, I was once the learner. Now I am the what is it? Now I am the master. <laughs> right, that's the quote from uh, from Star Wars. Is it? I, when, I, when I last met you, I was but a learner, but now I am the master. <laughs> okay. That's from the right. the, the first uh, lightsaber duel in the New Hope. Anyway, uh, I digress. Um, cool. Yeah, I'm um, not even a big Star Wars fan. I just am a geek in general. Um, so why don't we start? Well, let's start let's here. Yeah. Um, is there anything that you encountered while practicing that you feel would be um, mm -hmm. helpful mm -hmm. in terms of? Um, bringing up before you play um no okay i think like before we play no um i have some questions about some fingerings like i have like decided mm -hmm. on, in certain parts like trying to make like a single fingering choice and there's some fingerings that i've been practicing and i want to check on mm -hmm. um but uh to, yeah check on before i don't think so okay yeah um and some of my favorite songs to jam to? I have no idea. Uh, <laughs> um, letting him know what we're working on. Yeah, Caprice Arte by uh, Francisco Tarzan. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, my right, sister so about. Okay. Yeah. When so, it, okay. Let's, let's go ahead and do it.
don't you just start right from that introduction? That yeah, there, yeah, there we are. this time um i feel like there's much more um investment on your end of playing like there's deliberateness in the playing which was a big thing that we were talking about sort of a a wishy-washy sort of playing where it wasn't bad yeah Mm -hmm. um but you know i I was thinking about this sort of um you know Mm -hmm. i was thinking about this idea and the best way that i can put it is I'm sure you've you've listened to people playing, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, you've mm-hmm. listened to people playing, but you've been listening to them, and your and your mind probably wanders sometimes, right? It doesn't sound bad, mm-hmm. but you're not necessarily captivated mm-hmm. and engaged the whole time. You might be coming in and out and all this sort of stuff, but uh, you know, as you're listening, you start thinking about this or you start thinking about that, and your the music's going on around you, and you know, but we're not really like, ooh, at the edge of our seat sort of thing, right? Yeah, okay. I think we've all had that experience, right? And when, for me, one of the one of the telltale signs of that is when I start feeling that, when I start really having an issue staying focused on what the player is playing, it's usually because the player is not really presenting anything. Mm -hmm. They're playing the notes. It sounds good. It's, yeah, that was a good performance. Mm -hmm. But there was nothing really like that was holding the attention of the performer. Mm -hmm. And that's really um, what we're trying to, what, what I would like to see you kind of break out of, which I feel with this is starting to happen. Okay. So, like, for instance, a, a moment that I thought was really great was when you were coming up here to the high F uh-huh. with that D minor. The, the the intention of what you were doing there mm-hmm. was great. It was really, really good. Just, just, the, just for others, yeah. it's this part. Oh, wait. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that part. I thought you did a great job of, of um, setting that up earlier on. I thought the actual execution was done really, really well. Um, you know, when we get to that point, we'll talk about how to, I think, improve it as we as we go through. Um, yeah. So, you know, that's just one example of many different moments where those things are happening. Yeah. So that's really good because for me, you know, when I'm working with a student and when we're going into this interpretive thing, I think the and we kind of talked about it earlier on, um, is that we're no longer letting the fates decide how it's going to sound, but we are now involved in what it should sound like, Uh right? Um, Which, when you listen to, you know, A-caliber players, that's what they're doing. Mm -hmm. It looks like that they're on autopilot, but that's because those decisions are so well ingrained, and they can just rely on their playing that it's not a mental effort or a mental exertion. Whereas right now, it might be taking a lot for you to stay that kind of level of engagement as you play. And you feel yourself kind of wander and you kind of pull yourself back, right? Yeah. Um, Which is all normal stuff when you're starting to do this, right? Right. So, um, cool. Um, I'd say, yeah, I'd say that the biggest thing is this time around, I wasn't really trying to pick up any new material. mm -hmm. I was like, focusing right trying to sharpen and we talked about that where it's just like yeah. let's you know you're two thirds of the way through yeah let's hone what yeah. we have and, and cool. we had talked about that and so right. um cool. and sometimes you need to do that sometimes you need to say okay i need to stop pushing yeah. because what happens is like as you keep pushing forward 
if you're not, if you feel like you're not having the time to go over yeah. really what you want to do with what you already have, it's that thing of like, well, that's another week where that stuff just doesn't get touched on, right? So yeah. it's a balance. And on top of that, it's going to cause negative effects because you're like ingraining an inconsistent interpretation, like, or you know, you're playing yeah. with certain things and. You know, like, even if I'm, like, picking up new stuff, I would be playing the whole thing. Right, yeah, no, like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I reinforcing. think, you know, I, I feel there, there's definitely truth to that. I agree. Um, I think, to me, the only negative aspect of that is you not having the opportunity to flex that muscle earlier on. And so, by the time that you get... If let's let's take a hypothetical where a student isn't doing this when they're learning the piece when as they learn the piece but they're doing it afterwards right yeah let's say it takes right. them four weeks to get the whole piece into their fingers but they're doing it just sort of getting the notes and the rhythms and that kind of stuff but no consideration to the things that we've been talking about over the past lessons so to you know there's two things one is that if that student is doing that they're probably not used to or not even aware of doing it in this different way, right? They've never been exposed to it. Um, so it that's an issue of, it's just a skill set that they have never developed. And okay, so that's just, right. it's just not gonna happen until someone introduces the idea to them. Yeah. Um, let's say that the student is, has been, um, you know, introduced to it, but they're still fighting their own preconceived notions of where they need to be at before they can actually, before yeah. they feel comfortable working on these things. Yeah. And again, you know, we've talked about this and I've said it on the, on the stream that, um, you know, for real development and progress to be made, we have to be put in a, an uncomfortable situation. Mm -hmm. So being uncomfortable in the fact that, you know, like the first week I'm asking hard questions about your thoughts on a passage that you really haven't given thoughts to, mm -hmm. um, is that uncomfortable situation because for the student, they're like, well, what's the right answer? And the teacher's saying there isn't a right answer, but I don't want to make them upset. I don't want to feel like, you know, and right. all of that stuff is happening. So being in that situation, working through that situation is how you gain that comfort level of it, right? Uh, and then ultimately when you're left to your own devices, what's really hard is the fact that um, you're accountable for doing that, right? So the student's only going to do as much as they are comfortable. Um, hey, Beatrix, how's it going? Hey, Hello. <laughs> and thank you for the sub. Greatly appreciated. Three months. Doing a lesson with JC practices. Oh, look. I'm, the Allie. zombie's on my face. There we go. <laughs> um, so, and we're learning your favorite piece, Beatrix. Yeah. We're learning Capriccio Arabe. <laughs> How are you doing? Um, so, so, with that, like, let's say you're that student who is you know, in the process of developing that. Uh, to me, all that happens is that you lose time in honing that skill. Yeah. Right? So, sorry. No. In terms, you lose time in honing the skill of deliberate interpretation if you're moving on? No, I thought you were saying the opposite, right? No, when, if so if you're, so you're, what's happening for me, like you had said, well, if I, if I'm not working on this, I'm reinforcing, like, you know, a more passive interpretation or something like that. Right, like if yeah. I was only learning new material, then when I'm playing the yep. earlier stuff, before I've made a decision, yep. then the decision's being mm -hmm. made for me in that sense, right? Like, yeah. I'd be reinforcing an inconsistent interpretation. Right, I think. and so my, my th I, mine is a little bit of a different perspective okay. because I, I think that it's not as big of a deal to override that as... Okay. You might think. Okay. Um, in terms of like being concerned that if I do this and I and I not a hundred percent on it, like maybe you have a bad day and it's just like you're not putting that thought and investment sort of thing, you know. Or maybe it's a bad week. Maybe it's a busy week. Who knows, right? Um, I don't think that you're necessarily doing quote unquote something bad. I just think it's a missed opportunity for you to continue to grow with it. That's all. Okay. To where you're so. getting comfortable in the decision making process. You're getting more yeah. confident in your decisions. You're getting confident in looking at the music. But it's not negatively impacting. It's more, it's about giving yourself grace, I would say. Okay. And saying that 
like in the long pers- in the big perspective it's there are worse things that could happen in that sense right okay. does it make sense it's more of a philosophical thing more so than anything else long story short I wouldn't worry too much about that in terms of um, the negative aspect of it other than this is what we're trying to do and the fact that you're thinking yeah. about it the fact that you're you're involved with it you know that's going to be the most important thing okay yeah. I, I think we're saying maybe the same thing we could be different kind different, of like perspectives different perspectives or something yeah. But yeah like it's it's good that I've like spent some more time mm-hmm. here in this section right. like honing my interpretation mm-hmm. and practicing that skill of making those decisions and and I think the, right. the big thing ultimately was that you know where you were with the piece you can also get yourself into a point of where there's so much that you have to do that if you keep going forward, you're kind of just piecemealing it. That's I think that's rather, what I meant. Rather than yeah. just like, let me get let me give myself a moment to just sort of get everything caught up, you know, that right. kind of thing. Which I think is all of those perspectives when practicing are equally valid. It's yeah. you know what you need to do at that moment, and there's kind of no sil- silver bullet. Like no. if I just moved yeah. like one measure at a time, perfecting every measure, mm-hmm. like it would take forever. Yeah, and you don't have like the big picture yep. of the piece. Or something. Yeah, right. and then and then you know, um, you 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 have to listen to yourself. So part of this whole journey and this whole thing is learning what you need at certain moments and learning to listen to ourselves yeah. when we're practicing. Mm-hmm. Um, what was I working on? So there's a new piece that I'm working on, Elegy for a King, uh-huh. okay. and mm-hmm. um, yeah, it's in. The RCM series. It's yeah, so it's pretty. It's somewhere. It's so Dowland? Pretty. Is that? No, it's uh, Frank Hand. It oh, sound, okay. oh, sounds yeah. Renaissance, though. Okay. It's yeah. got a very modal sort of sound to it, which is really cool. Yeah. And it's in I D minor. I just remember the name. Yeah. yeah somewhere. Um, and okay. so, um, as I was working on it, I remember, like, making the conscientious decision earlier in the week, like, okay, I'm not going to really focus on pushing through right now. Uh-huh. Like I made like I made this decision. I think I even said it on stream. It's like I don't I like right now. I need to focus on these things. Yeah. And so I did. Yeah. And then I think it was yesterday where it's like okay, I played through it. The piece is set like it's in a pretty good spot from that playthrough. Yeah. I now can give time into mm-hmm. going a little bit further. Right, right. And it's it's literally listening to yourself, listening you know, mm-hmm. um, just sort of taking in what's going on and seeing what's going to be appropriate for that point of point of. So let's start at the beginning, and we'll sort of go through here. Um, I think sure. one thing yeah. I'll say is at the end of the last lesson, mm-hmm. you asked me to remind you um, that we want to work on a chill rondo. Thank you. At some point, we yeah. will do that. Thank okay. you. Great. <laughs> Thank you for the reminder because I could. Until you said I wanted you wanted me, I wanted you to remind me of something. I was completely <laughs> oblivious to it. Okay, just making sure. I, yeah. No, I appreciate. It. Thank you. Um, yeah. So when we get into the scales, we'll definitely be going into that. And also the arpeggios as well. Um, so, I think the opening suffers from the issue of just being intimidated by it. I felt like the first line you were intimidated. I don't know if you felt that way. Okay. Uh, but you, I feel like you are scared of that opening. Huh. Like, we're just, you're, we're a little sheepish. Interesting. We're a little uncertain of it. Huh. By the time you got into the second line, it was way more solid. It was more yeah. so in the way in which you played it. Um, so my question to you is, uh-huh. did you feel that? Did you feel a little like, I hope this goes well, I hope that it's going to work the way that I want it to? Was there a little bit of that perspective for you? Not as much. I mean, I felt more or less comfortable. Like, I think hitting the G, mm-hmm. like, there was a little bit of hesitation in there, but it wasn't, like, out of a perspective of, like, I hope this goes well or something. Um, so maybe I just think, an uncertainty of getting to the G note? Maybe, Could, yeah. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I think maybe one thing that we're picking up here mm-hmm. is that, um, like, I, I went back and listened to one of the first videos, and I think I remember that you prefer an echo effect where the first one is stronger than the second, like the repetition. And I think I prefer more an intensification at the moment. And I, I haven't written this in. That's okay. So, no. like, that's one of those, like, 
decisions that I should be making. Well, so, so I like so quieter the first time, mm-hmm. and then like a little more stronger yep. the second. Time. So I think then at that point, we want to separate the idea of timidness and yeah. quiet. Right. Right. Yeah, I didn't feel timid. Or, right, but it came across, it came across that way. way. Right, right. That, and that's why I asked: is like, okay, this is what's happening. It could be mm-hmm. a little bit of nerves of trying to play it, like just mm-hmm. sort of like I mean, it's a very wide open opening. It's very um, notable of an opening, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so there could be a perceived amount of pressure of needing to nail the opening. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, so, for instance, for me, something that is very similar to this was the opening of the prelude to the first lute suite, oh, the yeah. Passaggio um, scale, whatever the notes are, right. and like I remember just having a difficult time, what I call popping the scale, okay. just being able to come in, sit down, and play it uh-huh. with with conviction. It's not a di- it's not about dynamics. It's not about intensity. It's just the conviction of playing it, like that yeah. I am in control of this passage, uh-huh. not the other way around, right? right? Can and we so, give it another shot? Yeah, Maybe. so yeah. In a what, I, what I want you to think of here is mm-hmm. um, there's nothing wrong with starting this, you know, with less intensity and coming in with more intensity the second time. Uh-huh. Um, I would just, let's see what we can do in just making that feel more... Um, for lack of a better word, in control, right? Okay. Like that we're just, we are the ones playing the notes rather than the notes sort of pulling us along as we go through. Okay. Okay? Cool. And let's do like maybe the first two, yeah, we'll do the first two phrases of it, right? The first eight measures. Okay. Yeah, we won't do the fast games. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> interesting I think part of it is there's a um, a um, reflective aspect that you are presenting the within the first phrase yeah dynamically that's happening rhythmically it's not okay mm-hmm. and that's where the disconnect is for me so, if, if we want it to be more introspective in the opening, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. More contemplative, even. Do you mind if I take notes? Go ahead. I would probably do something like... I would want the, the, the character of the melody, of the, of the rhythm, apparently I was already interrupting, to match that introspectiveness, right? Okay. So, from here... Whoops. I don't even know what the notes are. Hold on. It's like a G, yeah. E, D. Mm. Especially that ending. You know, we're here. Bum, bum, yeah. Two, three. Oh, one. Okay. Two. All right, especially there. Right. Okay. I think this Like you can even go even more with that, right? Okay. Right? You hear how the whole thing sort of stays a little bit more calm, right? Yeah. And you're playing this calm. And I think, actually, that goes... Like, not a lot of people open it up that way. Okay. Nothing wrong with it. Uh-huh. But, like, if we're thinking of making a statement... Uh-huh. You'll make a statement with that. Okay. But because it... Almost because it's so um, counterintuitive of how people usually present it... Okay. Uh-huh. I would say yeah. you're probably going to want... You want more conviction on it. Like, really give into that. 
Okay. Really make it, you know, interesting. Go. Go. Right? I'm not really speeding up a whole lot. And uh, one E and a two E and a three E and a one, two, three and a one. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Really, like, sort of. It's kind of like a much bigger crescendo all the way up to the E, sort of. And yeah, I, maybe. A pull back. I don't feel like I'm crescendoing up to the E, though. Okay. okay. I'm definitely playing that last E softer. B da da. Um, I'm hearing D da da. Yeah. That sort of. It's not really a suspension, and like an, an, an appoggiator sort of thing. But I'm kind of giving it that sense of like that 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 okay. sighing quality of resolution. Okay. Um, okay. But, one thing I want to check on. I like mm -hmm. to elongate that first G. Um, yeah. Is that okay if it breaks the rhythm? Yeah. Right there? Like, what I would say. Well, don't break the rhythm. Bend it to your will. Do not break the rhythm. Okay. Bend it. Yeah. Morph okay. it. Yep. Yeah. So and here's the reason why. Because as I'm playing it, I'm finding myself wanting to go, and a one E, and yeah. a two E, and a three E. Like, that's what I'm finding naturally I want to do as I hold yeah. that note. Right. So, that would be breaking the rhythm. Okay. That, the, the perspective of how I'm intending this, like, you can even hear it, dee da dee da dee da dee da right? Yeah. You can hear that the, the, the beat shifts a little bit, like, as I call attention to it. What you would... I, what I think you would tend to feel is you would you wouldn't lock into where the pulse is, right? right? As the listener, that's what we would feel is this uneasiness of it, rather than feeling secure in following the player. Yeah. So here, this would be more so of one e and a two e and a three e and a one, right? One e and a two e and a and a three e and a one, and so we let's do it with. You know, sort of a more extreme push and pull, right? One E and a two E and a three E and a one. That was a big, you know, change of like slow and into fast, right? Yeah. We don't have to do that. That's just one perspective of it. One E and a two E and a three E and a one. That one's less of it, right? And then I think if we're keeping with this idea of more introspective for that opening, one. One E and a two E and a three E and a one, two, three E and a one, two, three. Right? Yeah. Where we could do even more of that, right? Okay. Um, right. So I think what's important is don't manipulate the rhythm to the point of where we change what the rhythm is. Right? Okay. I changed my perception of the rhythm. I was thinking and a one where the D note came in on beat one. Right? Okay. But this time I'm really making sure that I feel one E and a two. Yeah. One like E and a one, two. Yeah. One E and a two. Yep. E and a Which is perfectly fine. Right. Like that's, we're bending the rhythm. You know? Right. Like there's nothing wrong with that. We are manipulating. That is what rubato is. Mm -hmm. That is that is what makes human performance different than computer performance. Yeah. Right? right. Um, but it's really being mindful of, okay, that needs to be beat one. I need to know that that's beat one. I need to play it with conviction that it's beat one. Okay. You know? Right. Um, okay. And so that, that to me is like that difference. And that's why, you know, bend the rhythm to your will. Okay. But don't break the rhythm. Cool. I like that. Right. That's an interesting perspective. Yeah. So let's let's try that with that first phrase. Okay. That was better. That was already better. Yeah. Okay. And when you came in with that G, that the the sense of hesitation that I was getting before mm -hmm. wasn't there. Mm -hmm. 
It was it was it was okay. great. I would what I would work on with that scale is just you know in my practice I would really make sure that I'm counting through it. Um, one e and a two and one e and a two e and a three e and a one. Mm -hmm. Really, just make sure that we have control over the full rhythm there. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I think that you know again this was like the first time that you were trying it. We'll try it again. Um, the subdivisions were a little funky in the middle sometimes. I think it's just you getting your your comfort of what's going on there. So let's just give it another shot and see what happens. Better. Okay. And then like another thing would be making sure that notes are coming out equally right mm -hmm. so sometimes we lose we what what i call swallow a note like a note just doesn't sound like yeah. you're going along we're good we're good we're good oh we lose a note that kind of thing yeah right yeah. so things like that uh -huh. um i think that time the ending of it i felt more more of a connection to that scale passage uh -huh. okay cool. um but definitely we want to keep the the tempo of what's going on right we're allowed, we can let it, um, <laughs> yeah, we, we got it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> On, yeah. Auto -correct. Auto -correct. Um, totally. Um, okay. so, so yeah. I think that, that the ending rhythmically was better. Um, if Depending on how much push and pull you have in the scale and where you end the scale, uh -huh. that should go into what the rhythm um, is okay. for the rest of that. How much am I charging for lessons? We, we have <laughs> That's an agreement. Secret. That's the secret. But if you want <laughs> lessons, there's that. Um, yeah. So here, like for instance, if I was to do this, one... One E and a two E and a three E and a one two, three, and a one. Yeah. Notice that I kept the movement going because that's what I had set up. Yeah. Right? If I did... And a one, e and a two, e and a three, e and... That's, I counted that wrong. Okay. I counted I, and a one rather than one, e and. One, e and a two, e and a three, e and a one, two. Three and a one. You see how the rhythm that I set up with how I counted it continues on that half note. Yeah. That's okay. what we lose sometimes. Yeah. There. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think that this is touching on something where, and it's really related to the cello rondo that mm -hmm. we're going to work on at some point. Um, that uh, I'm still finding it really hard to practice rubato and like bending tempo like that mm -hmm. um like for the most part over the last two weeks i've been practicing this with a metronome yeah, yep. and like straight but then like when i try to perform it i try to add that rubato but i find it pretty hard to to do it i guess mm -hmm. like because you're not you don't have like a metronome to yep. like follow along with so unless you program something complex so ultimately if you're do if you're practicing, and this was the issue that I was having, and I would still say that I still deal with when I'm working with scales that are more fluid this way, rhythmically, um, which can be, which will go right into the rubato idea now. Um, if you're only practicing it, for lack of a better word, metronomically, mm -hmm. we cannot expect ourselves to do it with rubato because that's not what we're doing practice wise. So now the issue is how do we practice it? Yeah. Um, and so, yes, I, I don't do like any kind of like slowing down metronome thing at all. Yeah. I, I find that it's just way more cumbersome than it needs to be. And also yeah. puts you kind of puts you in a box because you can't adjust it whimsically. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. Based yeah. on how yeah. you, how you hear and how you feel at that time. Right. Do you want to push in the, do you want to push like it more? Programmed. It's right. Very, it's very much going to be this way. Telling a computer how to play right. it. So, for me, this all stems from counting without the guitar, yeah. right? Yeah. So, obviously, first thing is one E and a two E and a three E and a one, two, 
three E and a one. Yeah. Two. That's our starting point, which I think we have. So now it's so one E and a two E and a three E and a one two and a three E and a one. Right. Yeah. And so it's really doing that a whole lot. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. And then ultimately once you get that solid for yourself, uh-huh. then you add the, the the guitar to it. And we yeah. know that the pulse is going to speed up and slow down in this case. What we're not doing is we're not pushing and pulling inside of the beat. Uh-huh. Right? We are we are making the beat move faster, we are having it slow down, right? Yeah. So as I'm here, right, so one E and a two E and a three E and a one E and a three E and a one. I have to be mindful of where I'm pushing to. Uh-huh. So symbols that I tend to use, and you're kind of using them as well, if you don't mind me writing here, um, would be like if I was doing this, I would kind of do yeah. I would do like a little backwards arrow here, okay. which to me yeah. is representing I'm. I'm sort of pulling back as I go. And then finally, like, I would have this arrow moving forward yeah. to the E, uh-huh. right? Now, that might be one way of doing it, but then I could go... So there, I'm kind of pushing to here and then pulling, and then back. pulling back again, Yeah, right? <laughs> and so, you know... That's kind of how I write out what I want to do. And what's really important is knowing where you are going to. Yeah. Like, where am yeah. I speeding up yeah. or slowing down to? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, and the arrows are depicting energy movement. So, so or intensity. Uh-huh. So, um, you know, there's kind of a link of, okay, it's going to get more intense, so I'm going to get a little fat. I want it to get faster with the intensity. Yeah. I want to pull back. I want to hold it back. I want it to relax sort of thing. So now this is kind of the way how I finally drew it is kind of the way that I would envision it. More like um, one E and a two E and a three E and a one two three E and a one right? And then um, you want to be mindful of subdivisions during the long notes, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, and a one. And a two. That's um, how you feel the elongation. Exactly. And and it, exactly. Okay. So I might do um, and a, a three E and a one E. So yeah. there, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't go into my tempo. My tempo uh-huh. continued to slow down, yeah. right? Yeah. But if I went yeah. one E and a two E and a three E and a one, one da 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 yum, yeah. that would have to keep going because that's what I set up on that note, uh-huh. right? Whereas if I do one E and a two E and a three E and a one E and a two E and a one E and a one, that's something different, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. And so. It's really about that kind of control. Let's give it a few shots. Let's see if we can we can do that a little bit with that first one. Okay. Good. Make sure that your chords land on the beat. You're starting the roll on the beat. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Um, try that again. Better. Now, what's happening is that you are pausing on the first E. G E E. Uh huh. But it goes G E E. You gotta yeah. keep that moving there, right? Yeah, like driving the, into the the, the the relaxation will happen on the second E. Yeah. So what what I think you're trying to do is have that relaxation, uh-huh. but at that moment is not the time to do it. Yeah. You you want it on that for on that E on beat one. Yeah. Okay? Right. And right. to explain sort of like I'm we've talked about how things are personal and sort of our own perspectives 
But let's talk about sort of, um, and this is not more so for everybody watching rather than for you specifically. Um, there are certain things that happen in music. We do certain things. Composers write with certain intention. Mm -hmm. One of those is fast notes going to a long note. Yeah. Whenever you see fast notes, the fast notes will yeah. always end on the, the long note. That makes sense. So the long note has to be perceived as part of that movement. Right. So what's happening with how um, John was playing it is that you were... It, it kind of sounded like you were playing... Fast notes and then a long note. Yeah, yeah. Right? Rather than this big stream of notes going to that E. Yeah. Right? Um, you kind of had those long string of notes going to the last 16th note and then there was another E afterwards. Yeah. Uh, and so, again, if someone played it that way in concert and, you know, if, even if I'm sitting there, would I necessarily um, be offended by it or have a problem with it or whatever? Probably not. But, it, you know, as a listener, it would be a little disjointed yeah. to me. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, again, it's one of those things where it's like, well, what listener is really going to pay attention to it? And the, the answer is no listener is going to really be conscious of it. That's a casual listener. But yeah. the difference is the feedback that you get from the performance. Someone who is captivated by your playing yeah. versus someone who's like, oh, yeah, it was very nice. Right. It's right. one of those things that just subconsciously adds up like, exactly. all of these yeah. little details that, yeah. Yep. So, I, so, yeah. so um, the second phrase I thought had more conviction to it. I don't really have, didn't really have a problem with the second phrase. Uh, let's try and do those first two phrases now with what we worked on with the first phrase and see how they work together as a unit. Okay. would be I would have less I would be quieter the first time okay, okay. More, even with yeah. even with the harmonic I think the way that you're playing it now um, you don't need to be so powerful in the sound that's uh -huh. going to take away from sort of this um, more introspective opening yeah which I think is great I think it's re like it's really nice it's yeah. it's refreshing to hear mm -hmm. I'm not a hundred percent committed to it yet um but it's it's right a thing now, whether you yeah. want to choose to continue to do it or if you right. ultimately are unhappy with it what's more important or most important is you have control over it right and because you have control over it making a change well it's just a matter of having control over yourself yeah. like do you want to play it louder then play it louder you right. want to you know have the scale go faster have the scale go faster yeah. you have all of the skills to do that whether you want to play it this way or some different way or reverse them um, cool. Watch out for the three note chord. Uh, you, so the G minor chord, right okay, here and yeah. here. Mm -hmm. You play the, the that chord um, as if you 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 roll that chord with the same speed between notes as you do the four note chord. Okay. Yeah. It's going to be slower, yeah. or you start the roll later. Yeah. Right. Okay. So like those are those. Are, I'm being super picky there. Yeah. What's yeah. happening is that. The rhythm and how you've laid everything out is so great. That mm -hmm. three note chord needs to be a little bit more planned out of how you're going to roll it so that way it doesn't ship the pulse. Okay. That's all that's happening. That makes sense. Okay. What do you think about rolling all three of those chords? Like, it, it feels like that's too much, like, on some sense. Um, like, I've forgotten, like, yeah. in, in the sheet music, I don't have a roll mm -hmm. written in that, and I've decided that, but... Often, like when I play, like it comes out. Um, I don't know. Is that just like, so, too much? So, you know, I I remember playing a piece, and it was the Bursus, right? The, um, the mm -hmm. whatever yes. the hell the notes are. And man, every you know, um, uh, what was it? It's it this. I'm 
roll on every single chord. Yeah. And um, is that okay? Well, <laughs> but, yeah. so I'm playing it in studio class, and like one of the freshmen is like, you know, you should really think about not rolling every chord, right? Giving this freshman. Yep. Yeah. My teacher, <laughs> my man, Dick had an amazing. He's like, yeah. I'm not offended by it. Yeah. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you what. It's like. I think ultimately, like, I look at it in terms of what are you trying to do with the chord, right? Mm -hmm. So, to me, the rolls work here because it helps fill out the negative space. Yeah. Right? Okay. Where, you know, if you're going, you know, um... Like, if it's more rhythmical and forward-moving... Yeah. Works great. Yeah. But if you're more introspective, right. Two E and a one and a two. Right. Okay, so then maybe that's think, something I'll play with. Yeah. That like if I want the first one to be more and the second one to be less introspective, mm -hmm. then maybe the second time I. I, I would say that if if the rhythm is gonna be more forward moving. Yeah. You have. I think it could, I think playing that G minor chord as a block chord can be can be very effective. Yeah. Um, I think that if you're going to let things sort of have this natural relaxation, um, I want to hear the chord because I want space to be filled out. I don't want it yeah. to sound so dry and so barren. Yeah, you're actually right? elongating that note like as it elongates. And so one of the ways that I kind of conceive of a role is that of if I was playing the violin uh -huh. and I was playing the melody. It would be this, yum, right? Yeah. So the yeah. note would actually crescendo, yeah, da, da, right. right? Yeah. Well, yeah. I can't do that. Yeah, I can't make a note sustain and crescendo. Yeah. Okay. So what can I do? I can roll the chord, right. and it will give a similar characteristic to that melody, yeah. especially if you're mindful of putting the melody on the beat. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and emphasizing the top note. Right, exactly. Like, there's crescendo. a crescendo in the chord and right. all that kind of stuff. Absolutely. Right. Um, but I think what you have here, though, is an opening that is that is thought out, is um, clearly played. Okay. Whether you like it or whether you still want to refine it, it's solid. Yeah. It is, it's going to set up the performance of the piece really, really nicely. Yeah. Okay. So let's keep Improvement. going. Yeah. Let let's keep going with the with the um, with the bass melody here. So yeah. um, my thing here was more is again more about intent. So uh -huh. you started off that bass melody very very quiet. Okay. I don't know if you wanted to do that. Um. Yes and no. I definitely wanted it to be more than the preceding I, chord. I think like. you want it to crescendo. I do sort of. I don't know. Yeah. Could we try maybe like one more time? Or I would just, what I would do is, you know, I've often related this line to a, like a cello solo line, right? Right. Yeah. That's, yeah. and that's helping. my perspective. Yeah. And yeah. it's helping me too. Um, yeah. Or I've been thinking that more. Think about. Like, this is solo, so whether it's an ensemble, whether it's a duo, whether it's an orchestra, yeah. this is the point where there's a cello soloist now. Yeah. They're going to want to stand out. Yeah. They're going to, like, here I am. Right. Right? Yeah, I think, I, I really think it was, like, a technical thing. Yeah. Like, I, I'm pretty sure what happened is I... Played it on the wrong spot of my thumb, okay. and it was like a little more free stroke than I wanted. I wanted it more in the middle, like and yeah. the rest stroke. Yeah. Um, Why well, don't you want to try it from there? Yeah. Sure. Go ahead. Or Where, wherever from, you're comfortable trying. Let's start at the beginning of the line. Sure, so that's perfect. Context. Yeah. sort of that line and we'll go into the next thing. 
Did you feel like that when you entered with that A, you were at a bigger dynamic than what you ended with? Yes. Okay. Um, you were at about not the enough. same. Okay? okay. So I don't know if it was you or someone else. The guitar is not good at subtlety. Yeah. Like, what I want you to do right now is go for the big sound. Okay. Even if the big sound is an ugly sound. Yeah. Big and ugly is going to yeah. supersede quieter but pretty for us right now. Right. Just right. for right now. Right. Let's try it. Let's see what happens. I think my problem is that I haven't thought about this enough, and what I need to do is like bring that one down a little bit because there's not as much room to make this one bigger. Like, well, it, let's see. Let's, so what we're going to do is we're going to kind of experiment with where that where those lines are. I don't know your guitar as much as you know your guitar. Yeah. But I do feel like you've got more in reserve than what you realize. Okay. So what I want you to do is not change anything about the, the, the answer phrase that we're doing. Okay. Okay. And I want you to go all in with the biggest sound possible for that okay. thumb melody, even if it's the ugliest sound that you've ever made. Okay. Okay. But then I don't have room to crescendo after. That's okay. That's okay. That, that, for right now, that's fine. Okay. We're, we're looking for limits and upper echelons right now. loud and unfortunately ugly but not a big deal yeah, yeah, yeah. okay <laughs> so uh -huh. um and you were definitely pushing like where that guitar is going to be yeah i could you could hear the sound of the instrument just not taken anymore yeah okay. i also think these strings are like really dead could be like it's been a while could be but... um so now here you know i think here you're going to get from note to note and just give me strong notes each time. So, yeah. don't think about rhythm. If yeah. anything, think of everything in quarter Think of it as, like, yeah. quarter notes, and it's in one. Yeah. Like, it's one, four. I'll try that again. <laughs> and just give every note... Yeah. Just yeah, make yeah. every note even right now. top there, you, that's where the sound really starts to break for us. Yeah. Um, play that note again. Good. Move the thumb towards the bridge slightly. There you go. Yeah. So, you're going to want to change your... Right. Hand. Especially the right hand for that last note. Okay. Is that generally true as you go up the neck? Yes. The right hand goes so, up? what winds up happening is that the string length gets shorter. Yeah. Right? So if we think about it, um, when you're up here, your dolce sound is kind of your normal sound. Yeah. Right? So here I am, that's like dolce. Yeah. It's really? just, so it's just natural to happen. So yeah. just a little bit. I mean, the amount that you moved was like maybe, yeah. you know, like two, three millimeters. It wasn't that big of a deal. Yeah, it's like an inch, probably. I, I don't know. Yeah, but that is. But when you were before, you didn't know that much. much. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I do it very naturally. Like, right. and what I mean by that is that I'm listening to the quality of the sound, and I hear that. Oh, that sound. That's not it. Let me. Yeah. I gotta move around. Yeah, I think that's what I've been yeah. dissatisfied with. Mm -hmm. Like on that note. Um, yeah. Just okay. a little, just a little change. 
So now let's go to your that and that was very good with all those notes. That was great. Um, so yeah, you are gonna want to deprogram yourself a little bit with the idea of loud and soft notes rhythmically. Yeah. Because we're talking about a crescendo that needs to be even going up, right? Yeah. Okay. And so really what's going to happen is um, this is this is where rhythm and dynamic or or meter and dynamic cuz really that's what we're talking about is the meter, right? Uh -huh. We're talking about subdivisions, meter, where it falls in the measure and then it's dynamic. Um those two aren't necessarily linked to one another, right? Okay. Um, so here, I think that we can be less concerned with, well, the C-sharp is an upbeat, so I need to make it sound like an upbeat. Um, and really, what I have discovered over time is the more that I count, mm -hmm. the more that those things just happen. Yeah. The act of counting is, creates the metric and rhythmical understanding of beats and subdivisions and all that stuff. Right. And to where I can think... Key. Right. Yeah. And to where I can think of, okay, what am I going to... What am I trying to, you know, accomplish here? So if I was to count this and, and sort of have dynamic with it, it would be one, two, and three, and one, and two. Right? Yeah. And everything's getting louder. And it's like, yeah, you're still going to hear, you know, everything that we talked about being... Like, we don't feel that C sharp as. We don't feel that. Yeah. But that's because in my head, that is the control that I am, that I'm getting out, right? Okay. So, I would say, you know, in terms of how to override that, to me, it starts more so with counting. Yeah. And sing counting. Sing the dynamic that you're going to count with. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and the more that you, the more that you give into that, the more that you make that clear in your mind, mm -hmm. um, I think the better it's going to be for you. Okay. Um, but sorry to to like simplify here. Like you you are saying to play them a little more evenly, and crescendo overall so the reason why i was asking you um uh the reason why i was asking you to play it evenly is that there was an unevenness in the volume that you were playing at yeah okay like right. like i want to like if it was me i would first want to make sure can i get each of these notes to be the same volume and yeah. consistently get that volume. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, not because that's how I would play it, but because that's where I want to start from. I want to start with everything even. Okay. And so, um, what I heard was, okay, we, we, like, I guess part of it, part of that was probably deprogramming the idea of loud downbeats and softer upbeats. Yeah. Right? Because you're so used to that concept. I wasn't actively trying to deprogram that. I think it's just sort of what wound up happening. Yeah. Right? Just sort of getting used to, okay, I'm going to play each note at the same volume and just get a big sound from it. Yeah. Right? Really what I would be focused on, I would do that just in general with that with that part because it's so, it's so easy for you to go back into that old yeah. way. So okay. there's probably going to be a deprogramming aspect for you with that, with the thumb. Okay. Um, but it, it, it's kind of like you're saying to put an accent on every note, right? Sort of? Like, I mean, if every note is accented, is there an accent? No, because <laughs> everything's, everything is at that level. What I would say is that I'm just getting you, to, I'm getting you to play your maximum yeah. volume each note. Okay. That's really what I was doing. Right. Right. And that was, in a sense, so that way you know where yeah. your sound can go. Yeah. Right? So yeah. that way, as you're shaping the line, mm -hmm. you know where your boundaries are. Right? Yeah. So what we were doing, we know you can play softer. I'm not concerned about that. Uh -huh. But when you played loud, you got, it was at least twice as loud as when you played it in the piece. 
Now, yeah. are you going to perform it that way? Probably not. Okay. okay. But okay. it's more right. so about getting you... Getting you out of your own boundaries that you've created for yourself. That's right. what that's right. what was what we were doing. Right. Right? Okay. And so what you might oh, find sorry. is like, okay, so maybe I'm not going to start at Forte. Right? Uh-huh. Maybe I'll start at Mezzo Forte. Right? The, the line or whatever. Uh-huh. Know? Um, but I think the bigger part for me is that, um, you know, your dynamics are smaller not because of your instrument. And not because of your technique. Yeah. It's just a matter of, like, you've got to start pushing your dynamics. Yeah. yeah. And so the easiest way to do that is to play loud. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, so you know. Start for today and yeah. double for just, today. Yeah, just go for it. Something like right? that. Okay. Like, big romantic cello. Right. That's what I'm thinking there. Right. Right. Um, okay. The scale here was great. Really well played. Um, da ti da 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 my only thing is that I heard the shift here. Yeah. Right? The shift is like kind of tricky for the me. The shift is a pain. But, yeah. I mean, it's part of what makes it a tricky passage. So what I would really work on with this is really work on not hearing the shift when you play. Yeah. We want to hear it all the way to there. And what it might be is... Just sing it a few times. Don't yeah. don't worry about pitch, but yeah. Da, da, dee, da, 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 Good. Yeah, a few more times. Good. Yeah. You hear how it has this nice sweep to it? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's what we want on the guitar. Yeah. Try that. Sorry, right, try it again. That's better. So I think the other thing here is is knowing that we're gonna shift and switch. Yeah. So you're. I'm blessing. Uh, yeah. Do that. Just for right now. This isn't. There you go. Right, feel like your first finger is being pulled along for the ride. Yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah, right. that's definitely different. I've been practicing. I've been like trying to get that to so, like not have squeaks yep. and like do a clean. And if you listen to me play it, ultimately, there's really not any glissando in there. It's like a, a small one. I mean, I can hear it, but because I know the piece so. But well, also, think, but but but, but is know. it is it distracting to what's going on? I don't know. Uh, okay. It's new to me. Okay, so so, I, it's, so it's novel to you, so it's going yeah. to stand out. Right. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. that 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 makes the question a little unfair because the fact that you haven't heard it, it's going to stand out because you know it's different. Yeah. yeah. Um. So let's try and. Let's try and think a little bit broader, right? What would make it distracting? What would make something distracting? So a sound that takes away uh-huh. from the line would be distracting. One of the reasons why lots of people complain about squeaks, because the squeaks, if you have bad squeaks, they're so loud, they take away from the line that you're playing. Like yeah. you can't, like, it's like, oh man, like all I hear is, and I don't hear the notes, right? Right. So, are we experiencing that? Um, no. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, like the squeaks that could happen because you're shifting down, or the yeah the lack of squeaks because. Well, if I'm playing it with that with like that glissando, right? Like if I'm going. Right. It's. I mean, for me, what stands out is that that's the only interval that hits the notes in between. Yep. Right, like, um, but it is the largest interval mm-hmm. in that line, right? I mean, yeah, I it is because it's a, it is a augmented second, right? And everything else is a smaller, yep, like a, you know, minor, major second, exactly. Right? Yep. So maybe it's okay that that one hits well, notes in between. So, um, 
let's look at it just from a perspective of of what we experience. Let, let's let's not go too analytical with it, right? So squeaks become distracting because they literally take away from our ability to focus on what we're hearing, yeah. right? Yeah. Do we lose our notes? Do we do we do we disrupt the rhythm? Do we disrupt the flow of the line with that little portamento? Um, no, okay. not necessarily. Do, does that portamento dynamically stand out as something that? Is intrusive to the line, the way that I'm that I played it, no. meaning like where it's so loud that it's like like what is that thing going on, right? right? So that's where I would say okay, it's probably not as um, as distracting uh-huh. as we might think. Again, it's distracting for you right now because it is new. Yeah, okay? yeah, yeah. and that's perfectly fine and, and completely valid. Uh-huh. I think here we can then also look at it stylistically, uh-huh. like. This is the Romantic era. It's a little soupy, is yeah. what I would call it. A little, it's a little yeah. soupy and like super, you know, super romantic. You know, you know that kind of thing, right? Yeah. And there, there was less of it that time. Yeah. Right. I, and so the Pornamento is kind of a hey, thank you for the Ray Vane. How you doing? How was your stream? Um, the the portamento is kind of a byproduct of me just wanting to keep it together, uh-huh. right? Uh-huh. Um, and a little bit of portamento is not a bad thing. Okay. Okay. Um, but here, I think the, you know, if you did this, that we hear the shift. Yeah. Right. So what happens? And, I, and I'm exaggerating it, by the way. Okay. Right. So that's not what exactly you're doing, but just to make it super obvious, right? Also, I missed the note that time. Yeah, right? which happened. I think it, it's happened to me a couple times yeah. here. But so, like, as I play this, I hear a separation. Yeah. Because I am deliberately doing that. Right? Yeah, it's going to naturally be less legato right. than staying in one position. Um, and so for me, you know, if I'm feeling super romantic when I play it, that's, that was ridiculous. Whatever the notes are. But if I'm feeling super romantic, you know. Yeah. So. Whatever the if notes you, are. If you don't mind, yeah. I, I think that this kind of touches on my biggest question. Mm-hmm. Um, that, like, I thought that one solution for this could be to do more rubato or cello rondo here. Um, mm-hmm. That could like reduce less attention on that one, you know, shift that's like out of place compared to the other notes before it. Um, Where would you do the like, cello so, rondo? So I think it would be starting slower. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I think if you start under, it's easier to do that shift mm-hmm. because the space is bigger. Um, sure. So it's technically just easier to land the shift, and then, um, like, I think ultimately I want to, for that to continuously be accelerating, the cello rondoing, until it's just, like, smoothly from yeah. sixes to eights. So it's kind of like I'm starting at fives, getting into sixes, sevens, eights, or something. I wouldn't think that way where you're... Yeah. So we're getting manipulate... Bend the rhythm, do not break it. Yeah, like I wouldn't ever like program a metronome and try to. But don't even think of it as five, six, and seven. Think just a slow one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one. Yeah, 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 I wouldn't I wouldn't actually try to count it the other way. It's just like a little under six, and over time those sixes are getting faster and faster until they're eights and Right, yeah, no, absolutely. But I wouldn't think under six. It's just slow. What's happening is you're speeding up. Yeah. You're, is the beat is speeding up? That's what yeah. I would stay focused on. Okay. Okay. So okay. one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. Right. That's what I would think. Yeah. Okay. Rather than well, this is going to be slightly behind what the six would because you're thinking still 
yeah. in a in almost like a grid metronome wise. Like here's yeah. my tempo. I'm gonna do like yes. a slower six that you know that kind of thing. It's just no, the, yeah. the beast is slower. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, one. Right. right. That's what I would do. Yeah. Because what that's gonna get you to, to that's just like what we did up here. Yes. And so now the approach to the accelerando is the same. Yeah. And I would yeah, say more yeah. organic within the within the pulse. Right. With a slower version of this. Hello, two, three, four, five, six, one. Yeah. That gives you more space to make it a little bit more romantic. Right. So, like, it's like those. Those yeah. are two solutions to smooth out that shift. Yeah. Like, one is start slower so yeah. that it's easier to land that shift cleanly and in time. Um, and then another is to like fill that space with the portamento. And then I would say that I would affect is Yeah, I would say that I like the slower part of it right yeah the one da dee do da dee do because right we like this isn't like um a flamenco scale that just gets popped off right right, right. this is coming from this melody da -dee -da -da -dee -da So far, I've been sticking with that mindset of like lock in the rhythm, have it metronomic. Yeah. You know, sixes and yep. eights. And, and you played it very yeah. well, but okay. it, you know, in terms of the sixes and then to the eights. Uh -huh. So I think now, because you have that, you can start manipulating how fast you know uh -huh. and how slow you want the rhythm to go. Right. We kind of set up if we're coming up here, you know, all the way here. Yeah. We kind of set up the ability. To have kind of a pseudo fermata on that note. Yeah. And one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one. Yeah. Whatever the notes are that. Yeah, yeah. So, cool. which okay. can totally work, and I think would be really, really great for that. Okay. You know? Um, yeah, do you want to give it a shot? Maybe yeah. from the beginning, and we can hear that whole entire opening, oh. and then we'll, okay. we'll go on. Started that A louder. Yeah, um, that, that was a mistake. Right, which is fine. Um, <laughs> I think the more that you get comfortable with that, the more you'll, you know, yeah. the more that you get comfortable in, in knowing the sound that you produce on the guitar. I think mm -hmm. I think you're still experimenting with when you put in a certain amount of energy, the sound that comes from that energy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So the more that you work on that, the, the better it's going to be. Yeah. Scale was great. I thought it was really good. A um, little bit of a separation between the the, uh, the C sharp and the B flat, but not nearly as much as what we've heard before. Um, I would say, where for you does does the piece enter tempo again? Because we're on a we're on a B flat fermata. I'd say on. Okay. So. But maybe not. I mean, like, I guess the fermata sort of implies, like, the fermata might be the end, and then it's back at tempo on the A. Could be. Um, but I hear it the other way. I hear it on measure, whatever that is, 13. Yeah, so you kind of hear boom. Yeah. Which is fine. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, I think again because you weren't planning on going to going on, 
uh-huh. that transition sounded weird. But that was, I think, partly because you weren't planning on moving on. Yeah. And so it wasn't. Yeah. It was a little funky. So, yeah. with that said, just as a, um, as um, something that I would do in practice is I would always conclude the phrase, give the resolution, even if you ended on that low D. End on the low D. Yeah, don't, right? don't just end on the yeah. A. That makes sense. Yeah. 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 Alright. Um, the opening is sounding better and better every time that we do it, so that's awesome. Cool. Um, so, going on. The big thing here, I thought... Next page? Or no, we're just the, the bottom here, yeah. Okay. Which is going to go into the next page. The The big thing here, with once the main melody comes in and everything, is the accompaniment, the inner voice was very distracting okay. to the melody. Uh-huh. So I kind of heard this. Yeah. Yeah, that's not what it should be. Yeah. Right, and I, and I know that you know that that's not what it should be. Right, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So to me, it's more so of really listening um, to... Really make sure that you're listening to what you... getting that bounce so can we start that from if you could do the pick up into that melody pick up into 15 I think it is that's better can you hear that the F takes over dynamically from the A um yeah like the A sustains and then when you play the F yeah. I lose, I lose track of the A note. Yeah. And then as the F decays, the A comes back in. Yeah. Right. So what's happening is that we're playing the F and A accompaniment too much. It's too okay. far forward. Okay. Okay. provides a different coloration to the melody note. Okay. So what yeah. happens yeah. is because there's a, a slightly good. different color to it, uh-huh. we're going to process the note orally different. Right. Right. Okay. 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 So then yeah. this also kind of, I mean, it's sort of yeah. related but different. Like, um, there's an accent marked on two here. Uh, and, Where are we? Um... Like in the introduction of yep. the melody, um, uh, I've wondered if there should generally be an accent on beat two throughout the piece. Like, it's does he ever like have I've, where there, so I've there, written it in the yeah. first few. I mean, I've written it there, but they're not. You know, the cells written in. Uh, That's a but, really good question. That is a really good question. I, I kind of hear it at least at, on 
this measure on yeah. the F because it's well, let's just you know, do, do a little bit of yeah. He doesn't do it like throughout the rest of this. Yeah, which is common, right? Like editors will like start it right. and say like, oh, continue. Yeah. The same um, yeah, I think. I want to say that as I'm hearing it, right, I almost feel like that that accent is almost there visually to let you know that the phrase is going to be two. Okay. Right? Rather than losing the melody moving forward and, yeah. and projecting. Okay. So in that sense, I think, I th- you know, this is where, you know, it's hard to ask because Tarva isn't alive. You can't be like, I can't yeah. fo- fo- phone him and be like, hey, buddy. Yeah, what what the hell's going on here? Yeah. It's inconsistent, right? <laughs> right. Um, so I think I think from the perspective of the player, you need to make sense of what that accent means to you. Yeah. Right. Um, like I see that accent. What is that going to mean to me? How is that going to affect how I play the piece? Um, you know, he could very well be setting up things and say, you know what? I don't need to keep putting this accent here. It's going to be there. Yeah. Um, but he could also not be. You know, who knows? Um, and so that's a decision. I don't think there's necessarily a right one or a wrong one. Okay. I think it's more so of just like, how is that accent going to affect you playing wise? I think I definitely want to hear. There, there shouldn't be an accent there because it doesn't have. Relaxing. Right, it doesn't have that same push that the other ones have, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, those are like, when it's the same note, it's kind yeah. of like leading into the following. Exactly, one. yeah. Yep. And it's just, okay. it's just, it's almost like it, it should crescendo into it. Yeah. Right. And the accent is more of a push. Yeah. It's a weight. Not necessarily a dynamic accent, right. which, perhaps. Which goes along with what you're saying about like don't lose the A right. with the F mm-hmm. because we want to almost hear a crescendo from right. the first A to the second A. Yep, it's not possible, but yeah, don't want to lose it. Right. Okay. So now, why don't you try this for me? <coughs> I think, Excuse me. You know what I think. Oh, sorry, go, go. Yeah. Just stay on the A, right? And just, what I want you to do is just practice and just sort of loop. Yeah. Just do that a few times and really listen to what's coming out. So I hear lots of be dum be dum right? Do you hear yeah. that? So let's see if we can minimize that. The last one was good. Yeah, I like really lightened it. That was really good. Yeah. Right? So I think what needs to happen is just, before anything else, time spent in that situation to balance the voices. Yeah. And as you're noticing, it's like, wow, I'm barely playing those notes. Yeah. And now here's the thing. You've got a really good guitar. The guitar is going to project those accompaniment notes. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to be worried that those notes are going to get lost in everything. Okay. Okay. Um, So I think it's just, I think the more that we work on things like this, on like what we worked on in the opening, I feel like it's like really, if we were to, if I was to put all of it under one umbrella... You need to spend a little bit more time in your practice getting to know your guitar. Yeah. That's okay. sort of what I see feel like is happening. Yeah. Once you get to know what you need, it sounds great. But it's mm-hmm. like, I just need to know how my guitar is going to react. Yeah. Like, yeah. and I think that's part of it. Because you, you haven't had that guitar for very long. Like, yeah. considering, right? Yeah, six months or so. Yeah. yeah so you're right. still discovering your instrument. Mm-hmm. Okay. And yeah. so I would encourage you, like, you don't have to go crazy with this. Uh-huh. But in a situation like this, in a situation of like, you know, the dynamics here, those yeah. are great opportunities for you to, to learn more about your instrument and learn about how you interact with it. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, yeah. So I think because that, that was all of a sudden, that was really good. Um, I think that there's also a technical thing here mm-hmm. where like I haven't sat down yeah. and like 
like I haven't really written in fingerings mm -hmm. on this part, um, and I'm noticing, you know, now, now that like I'm dissecting right yeah. hand here, um, I think part of it is that I don't want to like overemphasize the thumb mm -hmm. on the base F, mm -hmm. um, and so I'm like lightning also on the uh, melody note. Can so you, it's like can it's you demonstrate of, what you don't want to hear? I very rarely ask students to do yeah, that, but just demonstrate it. Just so that I can get a sense of what you're talking about. Um Okay. So I think there in that case, what might be more productive for you, right? Mm -hmm. Think of um like it's gonna it's gonna give you more benefit than than effort, which is what I always want. Um I think the rest stroke on the A note is going to give you what you want. The power yeah. on the top note with yeah. being able to lighten up the thumb. Yeah, which is, like, just on a technical side a little hard for me to, like, think something different with this mm -hmm. finger versus this finger. Oh, yeah. Like, they're still very connected with mm -hmm. one another. So I want to have, like, a rest stroke there and, like, don't over punch the thumb there, right? Because, like, I don't want the bass to overtake the melody there. The bass so the won't overtake comes... the melody because of the register. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Um, the reason why the F overtakes the melody is because of how close those notes are to each other. Totally, which makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So between so, the two, it's it's a little bit better to, like, put... You know, if we start from the place that these two fingers are still very connected, yep. it's a little bit better to, like, have both of them... Yeah. Like coming through, but I would say that if you do the rest stroke with the A, you'll with the A finger, yeah, you'll get the sep the volume separation a little bit more. Yeah, okay. It's just something you can you just try that just sure. like on like here just just like right. I mean, the first one at least has that slide. Yeah, but right? dude, I'm just working like just on the the right hand mechanics. Okay, it's, I see what's hard, happening. Yeah, it's hard you, for me to do that. Interestingly enough. For me, yeah. I suck at r thumb rest strokes. Yeah, yeah. You seem to just go into it. I think I'm... Which is fine. Yeah, I don't know. Go ahead, just do like the A and the D. A and the D. Uh... But do rest, do rest stroke. Yeah. But do, give me the rest stroke on it, yeah. Yeah, I don't... Don't worry about what the thumbs do. Let the thumb do what it's going to do. Okay. I'm, like, yeah. based off of how you're playing it, I am not offended by the volume of the bass at all. Okay. And if if ultimately, like, I, your hand seems to go into that rest stroke of the thumb way easier. Yeah. It's probably partly the I think it's, yeah, weird it's the, thumb. Yeah. It's, the, it's the, 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 function. the function of the thumb. But mm. also, it's it's not overpowering it. And you get a really big sound on the A. Yeah. So I would say this. Don't overthink that for yourself. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't yeah. be... Like, as I'm listening to you do that, what I'm hearing is uh, a really well-defined A melody note with that's got nice support to it dynamically, uh -huh. but also sonically and tonally timbre, it's big and full and rich. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, it's got the sort of that coloration of the rest stroke that when you go to do the free strokes with the F and the A, yeah. it'll be just the slight, just a different enough color yeah. that they don't start matching each other. Right. Right. But then, but like I haven't assigned fingers for that F and A, and I think I have, I've fallen into a bad fingering. Like it probably should be I and M, I think, uh, but I'm using... Like, I'm using the thumb going from the sixth string to the fourth string there. Is that, so, is that, and is that bad, though? I think what's bad about it is that the thumb is shifting from a rest stroke to a, to try to be a free stroke, um, like, in, in a can, really short can you, period. Can you play it for me just so I can see what's going on? Sure. with the rest strokes on the end, even if you have to go slower. Okay, I see what you're talking about. Okay. I can I can understand that. Yeah, it, I just, can understand it feels that. like the thumb is overworked in this yep. passage. And like if I 
assign these other mm -hmm. fingers, which are free the whole time, mm -hmm. then I can like think mm -hmm. lighter on you them. Can. You're absolutely like, right. Yeah. It, it reminds me of the company of men in um, Vita Lobos one, yep. like Prelude. Mm -hmm. Right. So. You know, I think that's. I think that's. I think. I think those are all options to explore here. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. Um, but again, just to sort of back back up a little bit, the reason why we can explore these options and the reason why they're being presented this way is because of the clarity of how you're playing these phrases, right? <laughs> so all those things that you've brought in, there's very clear phrasing that's going on, um, very clear grouping, very clear intention of what you're doing. Um, and so that's the reason why we can start to bring up these concepts. And notice that all these things... They're coming not from a sense of, I'm going to change the fingering because I think it's going to be easier. You are putting musical thought behind the fingering now. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that that's a new development yeah. for you in a sense. It, it's been there for a little while, but it's definitely developing a lot more. Yeah, like, it's much more up front. Up like front, yeah. yeah. From the, from like day one. Rather right, than which, is, which is where we want to be with that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so... Now going up to here, what we're going to deal with sort of as a global thing are these little arpeggio descending things, okay. right? The, the ones going up and going down, like they, they uh -huh. happen a whole bunch. And yeah. so they're all going to kind of be the same. And I think um, the, same in the same in terms of um, just our approach to it, not necessarily how you play it, okay. right? Because I think what we've kind of seen is we've seen that there is variation that becomes possible when you have the control over what you're doing, right? Uh -huh. So, for instance, this arpeggio here, um, bum pi da ti ba ti da ti ta 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 dum, right? So, uh -huh. what are we trying to do here in terms of direction of that arpeggio? Um, I feel like it's very, and again, I know that what you were doing was getting everything really metronomically solid. Right? Yeah. That was that was a thing that you were doing because we were gonna talk about accelerandos and yeah and um and uh -huh. rubatos. So here, what would you like to have happen in that moment? Definitely an accelerando there. Okay. Like pulling back mm -hmm. um So you're yeah. kind of thinking um more so oops. like yeah. running down the hill yep. or something. Yeah. So you're you're definitely thinking this, yeah, and then um, here, ba di da di da 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 dum, yeah, I, dum, I, I, right? I so yeah, and it goes, and that is gonna go, energy wise, all the way here. Yeah. Right? Uh, yes. So yeah. it's um. Not playing this at all. Well, um, right? Yeah. Right? Uh -huh. 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 And a one or four e and a one, right? Yeah. So we've got yeah. this a one and a two and three e and a four e and a one and two, whatever. Yeah. Right. So that's what I think we want to be doing, right? And so it kind of hinges on this B flat e and a two and right or e and a four. Is one half of the mirror, the other half, yes. four e and a one two, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that again comes with with counting and going through those. Um, so let's try it. Uh, if you can take it right from the beginning of that measure, one and a two and three e and a four e and a one, okay. and just count through it. One and a two and three. E and a four, E and a one, right? Okay. Give that a shot. One and a two and three. Uh, <laughs> that's not three. 
What you want to do, we need to have this separation, which we're losing. Yeah. That breath. Okay. Yeah. One and a two and three. Yeah. E and a four, E and a one. Yeah. Right? Okay. That's what yeah. we're missing, which is the reason why we feel like yeah. it needs to keep going. It needs to keep going, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Two and three. Or just... but. What you need to get comfortable with. One and a two and three. And you just gotta you gotta get comfortable just stopping coffee. there. Yeah. 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 It's it's our coffee moment, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, there's still some there's a sense like I could stop there for as long as possible right okay. in a sense okay I don't get that same feeling from you I feel okay. like there's still a concern of like I gotta I have this arpeggio coming up I have this arpeggio coming up and okay. so that idea is still in the back of your head when you play this I feel okay that was good there's like quite a bit, like almost a fermata on that. Almost, but you know, it's interestingly it. enough, you didn't play it that way. Okay. Which it didn't is fine. Sound like that to no, you? like I thought it was too much. But... Nope. Okay. If if anything, it was in time. Really? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. okay. Okay. So this is this is where, um, this is kind of like another deprogramming aspect. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. Um. What I think is happening to you at that moment is um, there's an aspect of time slowing down. Yeah. Right? Where as you become more comfortable with it, as you become more competent in it, you have more control over it, the experience that we have when playing is less frazzled, is less sort of, um, sort of uh, barely hanging on. Uh-huh. And you're able to sit back. Okay. And because you're at this transitional stage, you experience that as, well, wait a second, there's too much space there. Right? And what I would say is, well, count it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How much space is really happening? One and a two and three. E and a four, E and a one and two. Like, it's like a breath. It's it's, it's like, like a, a breath. Human breath. Yeah. It's like a little comma, but it's natural or like it sounds good. Sound it sounds um, great, yeah. Yeah. But because you're you again, you're transitioning into this. Right? Yeah. You're yeah. not used to taking a breath like that to allow for separation of ideas. Yeah. Um and I'm you're used not to like thinking metronome, like sixteenth mm -hmm. notes. Yep. Subdivision click on yep. or whatever. Yeah. And and then also It's all, it's more robotic in that sense for you, right. right? Right. Rather than organic in terms of what a human would do. Right. 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 And so what's happening there is that you just, you know, if we were speaking and someone was talking to you, that would be a place where they would take a slight breath to be able yeah. to continue. Yeah. Right? Definitely. Um, because music is based in time, pulses and everything, we kind of get this idea that we can't do those things. But in fact, yeah. we're completely allowed to do those things. Yeah. Okay? Right. right. Um, and they should be there. Okay. Okay. Um, and so I think it, I think again, it's just you're on this journey right now. This is a developmental aspect where it's like, yeah. man, that felt like it was way too much. I'm like, no, that was great. If anything, you could have done more. Okay. And that almost yeah. blows yeah. your mind because of your experience. You're like, that 
does not line up with what I experienced. Um, and ultimately, the way to to sort of deal with that mm-hmm. is listening back and, and sort of being like, okay, well, this, wow, I really felt like I took a lot of time. And also, like, making yourself take a lot. Like, I am going to do this in the most ridiculous amount of time ever. Right. Right? Right. And usually, um, someone who is of your temperament, for lack of a better word, um, (laughs) you're never going to push the boundary to the point of where, like, that's a little bit too much. Okay. Okay? Because there is always that concern of it, right? And because, again, you're you're only going to give up so much, Mm -hmm. right, in your own personal time. As it develops, you'll give up more and more. Mm -hmm. But, like, the ridiculous amount of time in between... Yeah. Is not ridiculous. But it is, it feels ridiculous because one, you have, you know, from when we started this piece to where you are right now, you have way more control over what you're trying to accomplish, Mm -hmm. which I think is great. Cool. Mm -hmm. Um, Because you have that control, we're not playing from a state of barely hanging on to the notes. Yeah. We're playing from a state of, I am in control of what I'm playing. Does that mean that you play every note absolutely right? No. You're going to have weird sounds, funky things happen, miss a note by mistake, but yeah. you're in control of everything. Yeah. And so because you're in control of everything, our experience through performing is different, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Things are slow. You're, you're, you're able to, you know, yeah. think of it like taking a drive, a drive that you've done a million times. Yeah. It's more autopilot and, and you can think. I don't know. You're yeah, able to process more things, more things yeah, yeah. Right? Right, right? You're not, you know, if you're taking the first drive somewhere where you've never been before. Yeah, you're, you're watching Siri on the car play. Right, or you're tunnel like visioned. Yeah, yeah. You're not right. playing from a tunnel vision perspective. Sure, cool. And yeah. then, like, part of it, here, and first, thank yeah. you, you know, for the nice comments. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, part of it is definitely that there's still some fingering technical things here. I've changed. Mm-hmm. fingering recently so I think I I'm Look still thinking like oh you know hard fingering coming up hard new fingering that could definitely so be it's it. like distracting from the natural driving interestingly <laughs> though that when we when we had that space between the e bass note and the arpeggio yeah it, that and, did not happen right. and so that's an aspect of playing where, where I where it's kind of called note grouping yeah okay? yeah where what we're doing oh. is Sometimes the hard fingering is hard because we're trying to process too much. Yeah, there's no breath in between. There's no breath. There's no like natural. Re- we're, we're fighting against the natural tendencies of the music. Yeah. And so sometimes, like what seemed to happen here is just by acknowledging the separation, mm-hmm. which is nothing more than us developing our ears to hear that they are two different things, mm-hmm. that sometimes is enough. To deal with whatever awkwardness happens. Not all the time, mind you. But sometimes. Yeah. And that seems to be what happened there. But yeah, what I would say is, um, you know, I think the more that you solidify how you want that to be phrased, like we talked about the accelerando and the pullbacks and everything, that to me will dictate, I think, the, um, the, the fingering a little bit more. Yeah. It'll start yeah. to illuminate, yeah. okay, this is the fingering that's going to work because I can get it to do this. Right. Right? Right. Uh, which becomes personal. It's like, okay, what fingering combination works for me? Right. Okay. Um, okay. You know, uh, so here, with this uh-huh. one, um, so you know, let's start right from, from this point, and then we'll get into the climb up. Uh, yeah. So, I feel like, correct me if I'm wrong, you are linking the arpeggio more so dynamically to what has happened here. Because you're bum, bum, da da dee da. I think so, yeah. Um, so, I wouldn't do that. 
Okay. Like, I see it like this crescendo that starts here mm -hmm. continues going, so I think that's what you're saying. Right, but I would link this to here. Bum, bum, dee da 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 dee. And the reason why is that this is very much more, this is a very much a piano figure, right? And it's just a big arpeggio going up. Yeah. The subtleties of, um, of texture, of voices, I don't think happens here. Okay. I want... Well, but it's not an inner voice now. Yeah. I just think it's a gesture getting you up to the top of the guitar. Yeah. Right? So you're getting this... Okay. Right? So keep the... Think here now. Energy of everything going to there. Yeah. Right? It's just this big roll. Yeah. Right? Just this big thing on the piano that's getting you up to the high note. Right? Try that again. Uh. Uh. It's okay. <laughs> Can you tell I haven't practiced this? <laughs> well, this is completely different to what you're used to doing. Yes. And the sweep of the volume was great. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's that's more of it, and I would do even you know do more again. I don't have uh, what do you... so like yeah. really try and keep that whole thing just the energy of the whole measure. Uh -huh. uh, where, where's it coming from? Uh, the... much as possible let it roll off of your fingers. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right. But so you you make a big yeah they gotta go oh, almost fun. Go all the way to the E flat. There it is. Cause you kind of go and so again it's kind of hearing the shift you create a break at this moment, right? Mm -hmm. It's not a big break, mm -hmm. but the clearer that this sweep gets here, yeah, the 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 more obvious that break becomes, right? Yeah, yeah. And we're going forward. Yeah. Da 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 dee da dum, bum, da da dum, beep, bum. Yeah. So we really want to. The break is after it, and we totally, we yeah. and I know you know that because it's got the fermata there and everything. Yes. But it just, it sort of shows us where we're still playing in our fingers, right? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, there's a shift here. I'm going to make sure I get that shift. No, we want... It's got to roll off your fingers up to that note. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. Um, cool. And then coming down, you want to give that a shot before we, we go to the next page? Yep, that's okay. There it is. Yeah. So now here, I don't know about you, but and this is this is one of the one of the times where I kind of will give a little bit of perspective. To me, this is way more playful. Okay. Right? Yeah, totally. Like it's super dramatic. Make sure it's got the right layer, yeah. Yeah. So annoying, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> so make uh, it playful. Yeah. Right? yeah. Bum, beep, bum, dee, da, dee, da. And then it gets back into you know the intensity and all that kind of good stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, um, this is great. I think again the accelerando, three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one and yeah. count it, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and you'll get it. It's always played really well in rhythm. 
Um, just be mindful of where you're going to, right? Yeah. So you you have a tendency to end during these moments. Yeah. End there. Right. right okay. Right. So end at that moment. Okay. okay. Um, but other than that, I think you know the scales are really strong because you've got them all rhythmically set. Other than you, you know, missing a note, having a bad shift, or anything like that, I, I'm not really worried about that. Okay, um, it's more so of, I, and I do think that the more that you count it and you plan it out, mm -hmm. I would say that a lot of the things that happened is because you're trying to do an unplanned accelerando or something. Yeah, and that's the reason why we're talking about it today, right? Yeah. yeah. So the same thing that we did with the opening applies here, right? Yeah. So I would just start with. 3 E and a 4 E and a 1 E and a 2 E and a 3 E and a 4 E and a 1. And yeah. how I demonstrated it is the way that I would practice it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So there are certain, like, it's, so it's very physical. Uh -huh. You'll notice, like, my, I'm, I'm doing the circle thing, right? Yeah. The circle thing helps me feel the momentum forward. Right? Yeah. So 3 E and a 4 E and a 1 E and a 2 E and a 3 E and a 4 E and a 1. And notice that I could do the most stupid, ridiculous thing. And I'm exactly where I want to be. Mm -hmm. Right? Again, bending mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. into submission, mm -hmm. but not breaking. That's yeah. the difference, right? Yeah, yeah. And so again, like we, you know, you and I had the discussion. I don't know if we had it on stream, but the discussion of like, for me, the recording that demonstrates this amazingly well is Jason's recording off of play. Yeah, I remember. Like, I remember listening to that because I was working on another student with this maybe like two years ago or so, um, who happens to be Jason's student. I remember. Just that. throw that out there. Yeah. yeah. Um, but awesome. <laughs> um, I'm like you. Have you listened to Have you listened to your own teacher's recording of this? Mm -hmm. He's like, yeah, kind of. I'm like, oh, don't say that to him. Yeah. You know, you're playing it. Right, right. He was learning it over the summer, so was, so Jason didn't know that he was playing it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I'm like, and I remember listening to it. I remember listening to the scales. I'm like, holy crap. Mm -hmm. He it was. We listened to like maybe ten recordings, and his was mm -hmm. the only one where rhythmically it was right in there. Yeah. Like, I had never heard someone play so much in the rhythmical pocket. Mm -hmm. And then be so free mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. before I heard Jason's recording. Nice. And yeah. it's great because there are so many versions of this where people just fly off the handles with the scales. Yeah. Which I think, you know, has its place. But, like, you can't have a complete disregard of what the rhythm is, of what yeah. tempo. Not of what tempo is, but of what the rhythm is. That's right, the point yeah. of like, yeah. I'm starting on three. I need to be able to count that you're playing 16th notes. I'm sorry. Yeah. Like, that's just the thing. Maybe there are going to be people that disagree with me. That's fine. I just feel like that. that's what I need. Yeah. Like, and right now you can still map that or you can when still you play? hear. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. You can still hear oh, yeah, thing. definitely. Okay. Like throughout the whole entire thing, your rhythm is, is really well just controlled. Cool. Okay. okay. Um, again. A, you know, what, what gets in... So this is where, you know... Any issue that you had rhythmically was not because you didn't know the rhythm. Mm -hmm. It's because the notes got away from you. You, you did a bad shift. Yeah. The note didn't get out the way you wanted it to. Technical. It was, a, it was, it was yeah. some kind of technical thing. And, and what I think... This is my God's honest truth. You solidify... How you want to play it rhythmically with the accelerando, the way that we talked about it, those yeah. things will start to go away. Yeah. Because what's happening is yeah. you're going for something. Today, you don't know how you were going to get there. Yeah. You just, And you yeah. said, you're right. like, yeah, I'm trying to do this, but it always falls apart because we hadn't talked about practicing accelerandos. Yeah. But, right. So, a couple questions there. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. First, like, I, I guess a comment is that... Uh, I forgot. I don't know. What was I going to say there? Um, uh, yeah, like, I, I think I've just been doing that part um, just by intuition. Mm -hmm. Like, and now it's time to start mapping it out and, I would, and count it, yep. especially to, to hear that. Think of yourself like a conductor. Conduct right. the scale. Right, which I need to really learn how to conduct. So I do. Circles are fine for me. This is yeah. great. There you yeah. get, circles yeah. are fine. Nice. Um, <laughs> then, uh, do you have any way to pronounce, like, Sing, count, uh, 
the uh, 32nd note subdivision? You know, that's a really good question. Um, I feel like it would be easier to hear the... I tend to just do 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Yeah. Yeah. There yeah. is There are syllables for it. Okay. There are. Yeah. Um, I looked them up one time. I completely uh-huh. forgot. I'm sure that if you look it up again, you'll find it. Yeah. Um, they were so awkward because mainly yeah. because like I never practiced them. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it's just I I wish I had a better answer yeah. than that. But I I try to use one e and a and e and a two e and a and e and a but like. It, that's a little. It takes some mental energy. Yeah. For me, I think yeah. that's. I think until you get a system that you're comfortable with, the mental yeah. energy is going to be there. Yeah. So probably what I would do is if that's something that you're really looking for a solution for, like devote five minutes of your practice time of like yeah. technique time to just working on that. Yeah. For yourself, yeah. you know, that makes sense. Um, because like we, you know, we've been counting for how long up to sixteenth notes. You know, it's like it's right. ingrained in us. We don't need to think about it anymore. Right. The reason why it's a little awkward for 30-second notes is because, well, you haven't been doing it. And yeah. that's not your fault. It's not a, it's not a, a, it's not a byproduct of your practice. It's just we've never had to do it. Now you're experiencing repertoire where you need it. Yeah. And yeah. so it's just one of those things. So, right. um, yeah, I, okay. I tend to do just one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Like you heard me when I was doing the sixes. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Yeah. Like that's how I would do that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I like that. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Yeah. Um, I think okay. it's whatever is the easiest for me to get it out of my face is really yeah. what it comes down to it. You yeah, know? yeah. Um, so um, the the repeat of the D major sec of the D minor section, exactly the same. Uh-huh. Um, you know, same ideas. Again, the everything that we talked about with the arpeggios, with the bring out on beat two, all those stuff applies here. No big issue. Yeah. The F major section. Okay. Fresher. Yeah. Fresher. Yeah. But, I mean, play well. Okay. The big thing here is really know where your melody is because the melody goes in and out of being on top and inside. Yeah. Right? Okay. And then it's the same thing where you're controlling, you know, the other... Uh, oh, Jesus. Um, you're controlling the dynamic, right? So here... Right? Yeah. Those chords... Yo, yo... So okay, is it not? All right, so it's it's the inner voice that's the melody. Oh yeah. Like not the not the top. It's one. not. Okay. I've wondered. So, yeah. so here's the thing. Yeah. What he's doing is he's he's putting the melody in a different key. Yeah. Right. So the melody in this case was in D minor. Uh huh. The melody starts on the fifth. Yeah. Right. It starts on A. Uh huh. Which right. is five of D. Right. Well, now we're in F major. Uh-huh. The melody is on C, which is the five of F. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so he's putting it inside. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. yeah that's there's awful. Some, there's some stretchy stuff here. Yeah. That's awful. <laughs> I do. I do not. I do not envy you, sir. Um, so yeah. yeah so I, yeah, I definitely that inner voice. And it's definitely dum bum bum. Now that's interesting. Dum bum. That's the melody there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like this. That C note is the melody. So you get this. It has a a tie. Yes, there, it does. Right? Yeah, but like I think you need to move two to the G to make that work. Like I don't like unless maybe like it, it has to be right. It's, like I would say it's not to overthink it. Yeah, it's, a, it's an <laughs> aspirational tie. So yeah. one of the things with guitar notation that's really a pain in the butt. Is that, um, you know, and it's interesting, you know, you bring up a really good point because, like, for instance, here, Mm -hmm. there's a clear break of that 30, of that 16th note rest. Yeah. Why he decided to have it here, 
I don't know. It's kind of like to hear as if the melody, like, like yeah. this is the melody and it continues or something. Like, there's only so many ways that you're going to play in this, right? This, you're not going to do that. That's right. ridiculous. Yeah. Right? right. So, and it says it's in third position. It says bar at three. Yeah. So I would say, I would say this is where we just, we, we have to disregard that. Yeah. You just, you just have to. Great. Right? Um, I think the yeah, more that, good. the more that you, um, you see things like that, and the more that it's just like, that's just not physically possible. That's what I you thought. Know? Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. I agree. Great. Then um, another yes. question, um, I, I think I have to run pretty soon, yep. but um, this green thing here, mm -hmm. um, I've gotten comments from uh, some Twitch viewers that um, they've never heard a recording that uses this, um, which it's on me that I should <laughs> listen to recordings and try to hear it, but... Um, I hear that all the time. You've heard that. Oh yeah. That slide. Yep. Okay, great. Yeah. I was like, uh, I mean, this is the original score, so. Yep. Okay. Well, so people will take like stuff like that out. Like it can happen. Um, what I might do though. If I've wondered if this is like a terrible fingering, like it's working for me so far, but it's taken time. You do that, quite right? a shift there from like three I would, to four. I would probably just. I would probably come down. No, that's bad. With one, like. Yeah. Don't do that. Right, that would be very. Because would, you lose a C as a base. That's, that's but, not that big a deal because you're losing it just on the on the G. But sure. With the bar down, it, it's a bad idea. So what you want to do, what I would do there is I would be a little bit more emphatic. Yeah. With that, right? Yeah. But I've heard that note. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Absolutely. Great. Um, the another thing. Oh, you can't get that. You could do. Four, four, one. I think, I think, again, what you want is you want the smooth melody. Dee da yum pum. Right? This yeah. is what we want. Yeah, you want to hear right? this connecting. Right. We yeah. want this to be right. together. Yeah. So if I had to drop out the C at this point, it's probably not I'm good. not offended by that. Yeah. Right. Okay? Right, right. And I would do probably like four and one here. Yeah, right. I like that. Um, I guess what I have is theoretically possible. Yeah. It keeps a C, but it's like, it's really tricky. And so, you one, know, John Williams three. is the, like, John Williams is the, is the best of this. Where he's like, look, I can make this 100% of the time. I'm yeah. dropping a note for like an eighth note. It's or, better to go with the consistent. Exactly. Point. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, and then just here, uh, all of this is, is the same. This is clearly new. Uh -huh. Okay. Be mindful of of the sweep of the rhythm. Bum, da da di da 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 dum. Yeah. Ba da di da 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 di di dum. Da 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 di da 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 di dum. Bum. Di da da di da 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 bum. Di da 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 di bum. Di da da di da 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 bum. Di da da di da 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 di da 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 da. Right. Just be mindful of that sort of back and forth thing. Yeah. You know, with it, there where the groupings are. So this is, you know. I would think everything going down, I know that, that you don't have the layer set up, so I'm not going to write anything on it. It's fine. You can write something. Okay, cool. Yeah. So right. the, way that I would, the way that I would look at this is um, here, being mindful of this, right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I, wanna, I want that to have, I don't want that to yeah. be interrupted, yeah. right? Um, same thing here, although this is a little bit more directional, right? Uh -huh. Same thing here, which mm -hmm. can go up to there. Yeah. This is going to go to the bass note, 
up to uh-huh. here uh-huh. to the and through the bass note by the way ba da da dee da da dee bum dee da da dee da 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 bum right definitely and this goes all the way to the bass note here this is gonna go all the way up to there and then chung da 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 dee da 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 dee da 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 two e and a three e and a one two three four five one bum yeah right so yeah but that's what that was what was missing there but because it's new um what was great is that was rhythmically right there Right? Again, anything that you had issue on was more so of just the fingers getting around the notes, not yeah. any other issues than that. So, cool. Um, yeah, I think it's this is in really, really good shape. Cool. Um, Thank you. What I would do yeah. moving forward is, you know, take, again, because this is a piece where it's the same melody being presented in different keys, uh-huh. right? So we can use what we've discovered and learnt in previous iterations of the melody to our advantage here, right? Yeah. So as we work on the D major section, you're going to notice a lot of similar, if not outright, same passages just in a different key. Yeah. And so those decisions that we made earlier will hold up Uh coming forward. Yeah. So a lot of the work that we did in the initial page of work carries okay. through here because it's all just variation like yeah, it's, it's harmonic cool. variation of it right, you know? right um so that's what and i would keep that on the forefront of my mind so like as you work on a phrase before moving on to the next phrase mm-hmm. get those things set up for yourself yeah again doesn't have to be perfect but the decisions are made the practice is going in that direction yeah so that yeah. way you can you've completed at least the thought of this phrase that will now be just as you practice, refinement of that thought. Right. Right? So, for instance, making sure that we're going to beat two here. Mm-hmm. You know, this... So, this is slightly different here. Yum, bum. da 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 dee da dee tum Right? So, that's now a little bit different. It's not going to have that bum, bum, but beat tum mm-hmm. So, now, accent on beat two might not make sense there because we're coming down. It's yeah. not that same thing, but okay. the grouping uh-huh. of going to be two is the same. Uh-huh. And the reason why we can make that decision immediately is because we've made that observation earlier on, uh-huh. and we are hearing, oh, this doesn't sound the same. I'm not staying on the note. I'm going down the note. So how am I going to express that moving down a fifth and those kinds of things, right? Yeah. Um, the arpeggios are sort of all similar aspects of it. Um, so there's a lot of work that we've already done by front loading with this piece, which is just how yeah. this piece is created. Yeah. But you can put those in almost immediately. Like right. you get the notes under your fingers, you know, in the same day you can start thinking dynamically, phrasing wise. Um, and then now every time you revisit it, mm-hmm. that's where you're going to. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. obviously, if like notes aren't staying and you've got to get the the fingers going, you do that. But yeah. you're at least experiencing the learning process from the point of view of a musical perspective. Yeah, right, definitely. Where at least you can imagine what's going to happen musically, uh-huh. which helps you make an informed choice musically for mm-hmm. yourself and feel confident that oh yeah, I can see how this is going to get this sound. Right? Yeah, yeah. So to like oversimplify mm-hmm. it a little bit, um, we've got three weeks until the next lesson on this, I think, because we're going to yes. skip Thanksgiving. December um, will be, yeah. Right. So I'm thinking that week one is going to be pretty heavy on on the A section, mm-hmm. like work on what we've done here, yeah. like especially emphasis on the first page. Week two, I feel like. Keep working on page one, but start working on new material in the uh, in this D major section. Is it D major? It's D major. Yeah. D major. Um, like more focus on the B section, mm-hmm. and like bring in a little bit of this D major mm-hmm. of learning, and then week three, like a little bit more time. Like, should I start picking up new phrases, like learning new phrases from D major at this point, or just refine? depends on how you feel. Like, how do, you, how do you feel about what we worked on? Do you mm-hmm. want to give yourself some time to process it? If you do, then there's your answer. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that is 
completely up to you. I don't think that there's a right or wrong. It's where you feel you're at. It's like, wow, Nate gave me a lot of stuff to think about. I want to make sure that I give it some time. Yeah. If that's how you feel, then by all means do that. Okay? Okay. Um, What I would say is the moment that you start working on the new section, right? You Uh start working on the new section. um, I would say now that would be a really good time to sort of start to think about... um, like your your practice breakdown, right? Yeah. So what I would do is I would do a a, a three by ten split of practicing. Yeah. So I would do yeah. three ten minute sessions within the piece. Okay. One ten minute session is really easy. It's uh-huh. working on new material. Like yeah. That's pretty straightforward. Okay. And that session, what you do with that is. Um, you're always starting at where you started that new week off, right? I'm Uh thinking sort of week. So let's say week two, you start working on the D major section. So during week two, you start always at that beginning, refreshing and reminding yourself of what you're doing. And you're kind of slowly moving forward. So it's not this big push forward, right? Because you're going to need time to reinforce this, again, Uh based on how you feel. If it's coming together really well, yeah. Then, you know, move forward. If like, no, I need to spend time here. Right. Spend time. Ultimately, listening to yourself is important. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Um, but I. But always starting here. What that's going to do as you do that in a week, right? Mm-hmm. What winds up happening is now the second week you can say, all right, this spot now. Like, let's say, let's say over the course of the week you learn one and a half phrases. Let's just. I'm just putting it out there. Okay? Yeah. Let's say that that happened. So now, also, E Major 7, thank you for the follow. Don't think I didn't see that. I'm um, glad that you are enjoying the stream. Um, so let's say week two now, you've already completed, you feel really good about this, right? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That now goes into your reinforcement 10 minute session. Yeah. Right? Right. Where you're right. working through the piece and you're just working through reinforcing musically, phrase by phrase, right. putting things together, that kind of thing. And you can start new, and the new material is everything that you're currently doing new this week. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So that takes care of 20 of the 30 minutes. Yeah. The last 10 minutes, pick two problematic areas that you want to focus on. Yeah. That could be, like, the big chromatic scale. Right. For instance. Right. It could be counting maybe the opening. Uh-huh. Right? Two set, two, excuse me, two sections that you're going to spend five... Excuse me, five minutes each yeah. on. Uh-huh. Um, and they're just really isolated, very specific things that it's like every single time that I work on the piece, I work yeah. on this. Yeah. So yeah. just make it part of what you're doing. Right. right? That's been the opening 30 second note scale. So you're, or like the, yeah. the opening scales. Which is perfectly fine. Yeah. That's perfectly fine. But now there's other like technical challenges that mm-hmm. are coming up. So like kind of like two problems or two like exercises yeah two phrases. two areas that you constantly are going to and isolating because they don't work well for you yeah yeah and there are going to be more than two yeah right yeah. so you prioritize like, what are the two important ones that i do that's like these like red boxes there you go i have yep. written in yeah so so that's 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 what your choices are it's things that it's like these need to get set, settled yeah. i can deal with the other stuff but these things are like priority Okay. Right? Um, and that's how I would, you know, when you're ready to do that 3 by 10 split, that's what I would do. Yeah. Okay. Um, cool. Other things that you can do as well is you can take some of the scales, like the slur scales, the 30-second note and, and uh, six couplet scales, uh-huh. um, the chromatic scale here, where is it? Here. Yeah. Or even this scale here, right, when uh-huh. you get to it. And you can use them as technique excerpts. Yeah, right? yeah. And so in your technique practice, mm-hmm. you are working on them. Yeah. And yeah. so that kind of gives you a little bit more mileage out of the practice, right? Yeah. Um, what I find that's really important about it is for me, like if I know that I'm going to do something that's going to be solely technique driven, mm-hmm. then I want, you know, I want to put that into my technique area of practice. Yeah. So that way my repertoire practice can be as musically focused as possible. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like if I'm gonna yeah. sit here, that makes and, sense. Yeah. It, it just it. Right. You know, um, it's not that I don't play musically when I practice technique or things like that, but like if that's gonna be where my mindset is, yeah, I'm gonna I'm going to add that into my technique regimen. Yeah. 
Yeah. And it does two things. One is that it gives you a little bit more practice on the piece that you're working on, which yeah. is always nice, right? Yeah. And we're not adding time, uh -huh. right? We're not saying, oh, we're going to add like 15 minutes to practice these scales. No. We're just saying, oh, I have technique already allotted in my practice sessions. Yeah. I'm going to spend 5, 10, maybe 15 minutes on these scales. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, excerpts are very, very uh, useful in that way because... Um, you know, as your repertoire becomes bigger, now you start to rotate through the excerpts at a different right. um, momentum as you would your repertoire and things like that. And so it just sort of gives a little bit extra time. Yeah. Um, and then additionally, let's say you're strapped for time mm -hmm. when you practice. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe all you can do is go through your excerpts, right? And so you go through the excerpts and you just are feeling really good yeah. that you're hitting the things that are like, these things need to be practiced every day or every regular session. Yeah. Otherwise, I lose them. And that happens to all of us in different ways. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks so much. It, it sounds really good. You're on, you know, you're you're doing great. I don't really see any, I think, the big progress from the last time that we saw it. And like I said, the, the biggest thing for me is seeing the musical decision making happen. Cool. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and so just keep doing it. You'll, you'll, you'll see... Um, it, it's going to get better and better each and every time. Fantastic. Awesome, man. Thank you so much. All right, so yeah, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and we're going to just uh, break for a moment as we go through. Um, what is it? It's, oh wow! We yeah, have yeah, yeah, lesson we, on the Capri Yeah, show. thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. I will be back in about 15 minutes, and then we'll probably wind up wrapping up stream. So hope you all enjoyed it. Yeah. These are coming up on my YouTube, by yep. the way. Uh, YouTube slash JC Practices. Uh, so if, uh, I don't know, yeah. There you can follow is. along asynchronously there as yep. well. And then we have, uh, here's his channel. Thank Go you. give him a follow. What do you mean it doesn't exist? Oh. What? That's oh. right. I must have spelt it wrong. I think there's an S. Yeah, S at the end. There you go. Yeah. Um, go give him a follow. He is live on Monday and Friday evenings. Yeah. East Coast time. Yeah. Most so, most of the time. Yeah. But sometimes it's not. Um, yeah. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome, man. All right. We will be back in about 15 minutes. This room got um, ridiculously hot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we'll be back. All right. Thanks. <laughs>